Hello and welcome to the tyranny of the Dutch. What's <laughs> so? <laughs> Fuck it, we're going with that. Right. Hello and welcome to Once More with Feeling. Uh, special, really. It is kind of special because we're actually both in the same room for the recording for once. And we're on a different location to for either of us. Still relatively local. Yeah, but well, it's more local for you than it is for yeah, me. Yeah, that's what it is. I won't bother with introducing, because you know who's pre- who's speaking by this point. Anyone who does actually listen to this show, I My don't know. My name is Jeremiah Archibald. No, it's not. It's Dylan Maxweather. <laughs> Maxweather? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Blue shots of showers. <laughs> Middle name. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're already off to a weird start. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're just back from. Well, I say just back. It was about an hour ago now, but I'm hungry. yeah, um, <laughs> we're back. Not long back from seeing Silent Hill live, which was quite an experience. Uh, we'll be discussing that in a bit. We'll also be. Dis- discussing later the newest Killing Joke album which came out sort of like week before last we would have discussed it sooner but Pierce was over in Moonland behold the moon (laughs) and for those who aren't horribly racist that means Japan it's kind of like the moon I guess where does that even come from? I don't even know I don't get that I don't know (laughs) <laughs> um, I like the moon is actually, you know, things there. Yeah, it's not a barren wasteland. Yeah, I mean, the moon would be kind of interesting to visit. On the whole hand, you kind of have a benefit of, you know, not dying. Yeah. Dying is kind of a problem. Yeah. Us measly mortals. Yeah, that's always a problem. Anyway, uh, yeah, we might as well just discuss the gig, really. Indeed. It was pretty fucking good. Yeah, um... Uh, the atmosphere... How to describe the atmosphere? Foggy. <laughs> oh, yeah. You go you go in, and it is thick with fog. They actually turned it into some sort of... Trying to emulate the Silent Hill feel. You actually had a sign hanging from the rafters saying, Welcome to Silent Hill. It was pretty effective. You know, just, they kind of opened the doors of the venue and just fuck all the way through. <laughs> Which was repeatedly getting recycled. Just like with fog. Same thing for him. You know. <laughs> uh, fog, you're 100% recyclable. Um, so the first, the first act, which we pretty much figured out was actually one of the people playing with the band themselves but he was wearing a mask for his own set. Confirmed as in he said afterwards that it may or may not have been him, but totally was. <laughs> Same clothes. The, basically, the only things that had changed were he wasn't wearing a mask and he didn't have... Was it? Suspenders. Braced suspenders. Yeah, braces, yeah. Braces. Um, but anyway, that that set was quite something. It was rather interesting, yeah. There's yeah. Pretty much completely instrumental. I think the last song was something like a friggin' low of the vocals. Yeah, which were, were they? I can't tell whether they were ag- an actual language or just. It sounded kind of Spanish, but kind of not at the same time. It, it, was odd. it sounded like a blend of different languages. It was odd. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it was good. I mean, I thought we've kind of variety, kind of a lot of soundscape kind of soundtrack and stuff. Went with a bit of. Well, synth wave, I guess. Yeah, so sort of bit of industrial, bit of synth wave. So sort of, I suppose I suppose uh, there's a particular genre I can never remember what it's actually called, but it is termed as noise by the people who produce it. So noise, then. <laughs> sort of. Because noise is a genre in itself. Yeah, um, but it's sort of it had a. I mean, noise generally has a very loose. Hmm. We're, we're very ambient about it. Yeah, whereas it's all, it had aspects of noise, but 
It de- definitely had a specific intent. Mm. Um, it's a very, very varied set as well. Just yeah. Uh, the only real complaint I'd have about the set, and it's kind of, it was one that pretty much everyone agreed upon, is that there was a bit too much in terms of lighting effects. Like what's that? You like eyes? Well, you haven't got any now. Pretty much. I mean, <laughs> talking to a few people afterwards and them saying about needing to close their eyes because of how intense the light lighting was and. Yeah, it's. I mean, it actually worked quite well if you close your eyes and just listen to it. You ended up with some very weird images running through your head. <laughs> it's sort of like, oh god, I'm having a nightmare, but I'm not asleep. What the fuck? You're like, ah, I'm being, my brain is being invaded by the 80s. <laughs> oh, if you want your brain invaded by the 80s, watch Kung Fury. I really hate to say that film. It looks yeah. incredibly fun. It's. We'll discuss that after we've actually discussed. Yeah, there's something I've been meaning to see. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, it was really quite something. And um, what was the guy's name? I don't know. He did explain it at the end of the set, saying, <laughs> or at the end of the whole thing, saying, oh, this is my name. It's on the posters, guys. And no one ever looked. Okay, well, where's the poster? I don't think it's on the poster. It is on the uh, set the poster. I don't think it's on that. Well, we can always look. Uh, yeah, I'll just lay it uh, back up on. Just as guest DJs. Yeah. I don't know. Mm. Which is online somewhere. Yeah. I don't know somewhere actually. What the guy's name was. And it was actually on the schedule, but just I like, kind of forgot to look. Yeah. To be fair, I mean, I think it was Tim? The Tom. Tom. Tom was the guy's name. Yeah. But I don't know the um, actual head and artist work, which is different. Yeah. That's. That's. Oh, the, well, I think it's like. Ace Amora or something? I don't know that. But yeah, that was something. Um, and you got sort of the break, which... It was pretty basic, probably. Yeah. Like, as you expect from work. Yeah, although you, you got a few things... So, some music, I kept saying about it, it sounding like um, music from Xena, Warrior Princess, and it's sort of like, next week on Xena. We were getting that, that was getting a Kikushi Kata vibes. So yeah. yeah. Uh, also, just kind of basic compared to what I had when I see Agalok, because the break between the two bands there's about half an hour, it's just one really, really long black metal song. Yeah. Well, it's very <laughs> basic compared to Devin Townsend, where it's videos from YouTube that are just, what the fuck <laughs> am I watching? Oh, uh, oh, Devin Townsend. It's always fun. And he always adds new ones in and takes old ones out. Ah, so, you, nice. so you just sort of like I don't even We're know. Just put on his YouTube history. Yeah, <laughs> it pretty much seems like that. I think it must be a case of some people will th- send in sort of YouTube links and things like that for Possibly, him to yeah. look at. Uh, well, we're getting sidetracked. Uh, Nothing different there. <laughs> that's kind of why we call it once more with feeling because we're. What's more of a distraction more like? Yeah. Well, some, well, a couple of reviewers already have Going Off as their title, so we can't really go for that. <laughs> um, but anyway, one of these days I'll probably do an outtake reel of just us. What, like our opening to this one? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, ju- that's just... That's just... We've got an outtake that's been left in. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck it. You, you screwed it up. <laughs> I think I'm really better at least. Can you cross off the album when? It's been like nine years. Well, how long was it between Winter Sun albums? Forever. Exactly! I'm too still in that. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. To be fair, he's doing literally everything on his own. This is true. <laughs> anyway, uh, shall we talk t- about the actual gig? What about that? It's kind of the point. Yeah. I mean,. You'll be able to actually name the songs track by track. I'll just. I can remember pretty much all of them, yeah. Yeah. I can never. I'm absolutely awful at remembering what order things are in. Yeah. Uh, well, really, we can just go overs of, like, you know, standout ones for us. Well, I know they opened up with Theme of Laura from Song Hell 2, mm. which was pretty bloody amazing, I don't know what I mean. Yeah. I mean, 
that really worked well to just set you in for what you what you would be getting in for. Well, certainly they went from there, so into Love Song, which is arguably my favourite instrumental piece in the entire franchise. <laughs> Absolutely love that thing so much. Yeah, I mean, I would say that some some live sets you'll have one or two songs which you'll think mm, might be ni- an idea to do a different song, mm. but I I would definitely say that with this set there was not a song that I wouldn't. Or oh, wouldn't want to hear. It. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure it'd be nice to that get off in here. I mean, fucking, fucking, fucking believe. You can rant about believe later. I always want to rant about believe. Yes, later, after we've done the album review. Album review? You mean gig review? Or you mean. No, remember Killing Joke? Oh, uh, you mean directly after this or what? I don't know. We didn't discuss this. Okay, you can rant about it after the gig review, and that can be a sort of segue. What I mean, they're the only riding up a cliff and killing himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that happened. <laughs> anyway, yeah, um, this is about a lot of vocal stuff, which is I wasn't entirely sure what to expect with that. I mean, it wasn't very little to be claimed, sadly. Mm-hmm. But the girl I had there did a very good job. Yeah. She pretty much had the right kind of intonation in pretty much every single case. She knew the, she sang everything very well as so. well. Yeah, I mean, there were some songs where when she started si- singing, I genuinely got chills going through me. Mm, I, I did get that a little bit. Yeah. It's, um, skipping ahead a bit, um, might as well do back to back of both the song you wanted to hear most and the one I wanted to hear most. Indeed. Just the fact that I actually played Tender Sugar from Sunday of Four, which is one of if not my favourite song of all time. The thing alive was absolutely incredible. Oh, that's so good. And immediately after that, <laughs> they play um, Room of Angel. Which, that's what we're for. Yeah, that just, we get to the getting chills down yeah. the spine. And Why does Sunday Four have so many good songs? Yeah. They play Waiting For You as well, which is also amazing. <laughs> I think Your Rain is in Sunday Four as well, I played that too. Well, to I be like some really good songs. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, they've got to set an atmosphere with the music. Mm. So, I mean, considering Silent Hill Four is all in a room. Well, the branches are on the room. I, I know, <laughs> but a lot of the events that happen aren't you know you murdering monsters happen inside the room or within the area so you can see from the room. Yeah. yeah. So it works that the music would be very powerful and evocative. <laughs> Indeed. I mean, so they're the very pretty. I think they must play pretty much every song, very vocal song from Silent Hill 4. Mm-hmm. And I think most of them was from Silent Hill 3 as well. Because yeah. they had, uh, there was a finished thought, last song they played was uh, You're Not Here, which mm. is the opening theme to the game. Mm-hmm. And actually, the song that got me into the soundtrack in the first place, I remember just sticking the disc in my PS2 and that song came on the opening, I was like, I need this song in my life. Fair dues. So, I remember they played that as well. Yeah. Also played uh, the studio version of I Want Love, which I was not actually expecting. Mm-hmm. I remember looking at a set list, I didn't even know that was on there. Yeah. I don't remember seeing it on there. Well, I mean, I was being blind, but... Uh, maybe every so often they'll throw in a song that's unique to that particular gig. Quite possible, I have a lot of do that kind of thing. Yeah. So, but yeah, it was good to hear that as well. Yeah. Um, the one thing... I mean, I understand why it was the case, but the one thing that did bug me was the fact that we were having to sit the whole whole gig. The fact that you know the singer told us to stand up and then got told off for doing it. Yeah, <laughs> I do understand why because you know fire hazard and when there's chairs all around. It, yeah, I can that. But yeah, it's still a bit. It, it's one of those. Uh, it's more or less a metal gig. And yeah. not being able to stand at a metal gig is like, what, what, what? Even the lighter stuff is definitely still rock. So. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't sure what I I was expecting with the gig. I, I mean, part of me was kind of expecting sort of a full orchestra or something like that. Mm, that's the kind of thing which, I think he has done that before in Japan. Mm-hmm. I was saying one of the performances he did, because I know they showed a couple of snippets from it. Yeah. I'm pretty sure at that point he did have an entire orchestra with him. Mm. Of course, you know, being back in the home country, they have access to all the things they can get out of it. Yeah, to be fair, it's a lot cheaper to just hire the symphony than to ship them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's, it's pretty well, they had a, I suppose the uh, kind of set they had was also quite a bit different because of that. It's kind of stuff they could do with, you know, a regular band set up. Yeah. Um, 
because there wasn't much in the way of actual instrumental pieces. Most, in fact, all of them are from Sonic 2. Yeah. All of them Sonic 2 is really popular. Mm. It also has an incredible soundtrack. Yeah. One track that I do wish they had played, I want to get this right, I believe it's called Your Heaven. Oh, um, yeah, I don't know what you mean. It's the one that has the really quick, rapid build up of drum beats that it might be your heaven, and yeah. and it sounds it sounds a bit like um, sort of the pounding on doors and mm. well, there's a lot of stuff like that as well. I mean, there are a few things I would have liked to have heard, like She from Sun Hill One. Mm-hmm. It's an absolutely amazing piece. I know that. Yeah. And also, acceptance of course from Sun yeah, Memories, which is of nice. course. If if they played acceptance, I can guarantee we would have just been ah, <laughs> uh, just leave us here. Coming out. <laughs> we probably wouldn't have left because it's just sort of like <laughs> no. I'm, I'm too dead. <laughs> also, it was interesting that they actually do some stuff on the later games as well. I mean, I don't know whether they actually know the kind of responses that they're going to be getting, but well, to be fair. Th- this is one of the things which is, I'm at quite an advantage with because I haven't played the games. Mm. I don't have any bias any particular way in terms of how, say, Shattered Memories or Homecoming or whatever it's like. I can just appreciate the music yeah. as it comes. So having uh, When You're Gone and Hell Froze in Rain, both of which are from Shattered Memories, if I remember correctly? I well, think they are. Yeah, they're half frozen brains. I think the one is as well. Well, it's interesting to hear those. What I would have liked to have heard is Ellie theme from Homecoming. Mm-hmm. Which I really, really like. Also, Alex theme. Both of them are very good. Mm. But then, I didn't know really when I actually played any of the Homecoming room stuff. I did. I'm not mm-hmm. sure. There was like three or four songs from that that have over my things. So I didn't play any of them. Mm. I just know that they did do a lot of shattered memories. It's, mm. They did two of the Homecoming things. I think it was four of them. Mm. So, uh, they had two from Chatter Memories at least, they did all the ones from three and four from what I can recall, mm-hmm. other than the male vocal ones from there, because they didn't have Jerry Mercer with them, I would like to have had Cradle of Forest from four, but mm. And they played um, Trilliner Flames from Origins as well. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there was a good variety of stuff there, vocal wise. And as for the instrumental stuff, you know, just Love Someone itself is enough to make me just cry with happiness. <laughs> <laughs> but having thing with Laura and Promise both played was as expected really. They finished off with Promise. Oh, one of the ones I finished off with for the last vocal song. Mm-hmm. Also, the classic Silent Hill theme. So yeah, uh, complete with a guy playing mandolin. So, <laughs> got Tom. Yeah, I mean his mandolin playing is. It's impeccable. I was sort of like, oh well, before he broke into that, he actually built up with doing. The, it was the. Um, Godfather music. Yeah, it was. Yeah. He, uh, before going into the actual Silent Hill theme, he built up by playing the Godfather theme. <laughs> this is going to get into the soft swing of things. I was like, yeah, this is a rather impressive mandolin playing. I don't think I've ever seen any live mandolin playing before. <laughs> I have, but that's because of the Huckleberries being local to me. Oh, uh, yeah, that's true. I, I did see them in town for a short period at one point where I passed. Mm. So. I, because I have for a few seconds. <laughs> I think I should stop that time. But yeah, yeah Errol is super amazing. Yeah. Um, trying to think. Key standout things. Tender Sugar. <laughs> well, Tender Sugar and uh, Room of Angel. Uh, yeah, I can't believe I didn't realise that it was about addiction until now. <laughs> it is, yes. I mean, if you look at the video, it does kind of show off in a very abstract way. Yeah. But the lyrics are very, very obviously about that. Yeah, when when you when you're told it's about addiction and you start hearing the lyrics, it's all like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Now I hear it. I don't know how I didn't hear it in the first place. I'm an idiot. Uh, yeah. Um. Well, they came on to um, betrayal or Red yeah. Pyramids or whatever it's fucking titled. There's Betrayal, well, there's the version they have of Betrayal. Like yeah. Red Pyramids is a slightly different version of it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they, they played a bunch of other kind of kind of backing track style songs. So, try to which one it was that they had the drum solo for. Um, oh god. I think it might have been Medical Requiem, I'm not sure. Possibly. 
I'd have to check. Yeah, I wish I could have that yeah. they, they had the backing track combined with the guy just doing a drum solo for the entire thing, which was pretty awesome. Especially the drum solos are really rare these days. Yeah. Well, you can blame Iron Butterfly for that. <laughs> you know, having the song to end all solos. <laughs> drum solo, guitar solo, bass solo, probably a mandolin solo <laughs> somewhere in there. Because it's really- Fucking in a gutter to it just goes on and on. <laughs> the original is 17 minutes long, and when they play it live, it was even longer. Wow. Well, I've had quite a few songs that I've seen live that have been on quite considerably longer. I mean, as I said, when I was like Isis, they played um, Celestial Tower. The original version is 9 minutes long, the live version of it was twice that. Yeah, but I'm talking, the original is 17 minutes long, yeah. and when it's played live, it's longer. <laughs> I know when I saw California, they played Ongaku, and they made that like an extra three or four minutes long as well. Yeah. It's already like a four and a half minute song. Yeah, when um, I saw Devin Townsend do um, Deconstruction Live, Mighty Masturbator was at least a couple of minutes longer than normal. So, what do you like to stick to in the half? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, Actually, I think it is almost 17 minutes. Mm, it is long. But it doesn't feel long. It That's the matter. important thing. I, guess, I, must admit, I think when they played Room of Angel, they, they might have actually shorter than the original. I think it might have Because I know the original was like nearly 7 minutes or so. I don't think yeah. it was quite that long. I think it might have been slightly shorter. It didn't suffer for it. No, it, it still works. Also, the, the Waiting for You is... Because the original version of Waiting You is actually a live version anyway. Mm. But uh, I know it has like an extra bit at the end where they go into the song and thing, but that wasn't there. So. Mm. Which makes sense because it doesn't really fit. Because if, I mean, if they're going into playing the song and thing after that, it would have made sense because it's actually in the original version of the song. Yeah. But since I put the song and thing later on, they have to come up with that. Yeah. Uh, um, I was interested to see that your rain actually played the, the kind of instrumental bit at the end of it. Yeah. Because no, the original version does stop and then kind of goes into an instrumental trunk after that. And they actually play that live. I think it has to end the instrumental bit as well. Mm. Um, oh, another standout one for me. Uh, it was Letters from Heaven. Uh, Little Lesson from Heaven. Huh? Letters from Heaven. Yeah. Yeah, that was nice. Yeah. I mean, that really, that struck a chord for me because um, I used it for one of my, well, mm. you helped me sort out things. Yeah. For that. Yes, I- I don't actually know what the official title of the thing is, because it isn't actually on the main soundtrack. Yeah, that that's what's really weird, because you you look, you can find it on YouTube, there's plenty of videos online, but you can't find it on the official soundtrack. I know that the Sun Hill Soundtrack comes with an extra disc that has a bunch of stuff in it, but it's not even on there. Yeah. So, and I know also that it's possible to download uh, complete versions of the main, especially rips the stuff directly from the games. There's a lot of stuff that's on the, in the games that it doesn't appear on the soundtracks. That's really weird. Really, there's already a lot of stuff on the soundtracks. Yeah. But that's that's even weirder, the fact that they play live something that's not even on the soundtracks. The thing there is The Cure. Mm-hmm. The song Forever that they play. Yeah. As far as I'm aware, I've looked around, it does not have a non-live version. The only versions that exist is a live version on the B-side collection and being actually being played live. Oh, wow. I've seen it live. And someone said there is no studio version for it. Huh. I was like, what? That was one that just, just does not exist in studio form. It's kind of strange. Hmm. There was a song here. It's gone now. <laughs> it's not a very good song. Also, like seven minutes long. Hmm. Also, you know, best thing, just actually being able to meet a karaoke maker himself. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm nowhere near as much a, a fanboy of the Silent Hill games. Well, I just said I haven't played them, so <laughs> I can hardly be a fanboy of them. But when it comes to musicians and composers, if it's music I love, and I do love the music from Silent Hill, getting to meet them is sort of like, yes! We're not worthy, we're not worthy. He's <laughs> really chill as well, so... Yeah, I think he was... I think he might have been a bit overwhelmed with how much love and adoration he was getting. Well, it's the first time he's been to the UK, so... Yeah. It's kind of a case of, oh, I'll go to this country, uh, people have mentioned no one to me to go there before, see what it's like. And just torrents of love. Hmm. Well, at the end, the crowd was getting pretty crazy for him. So, hmm. look, we're staying at the end as well. So, wait for him. Yeah, it's just as well we've got a hotel room so that we didn't have to worry about rushing off before the end. Yeah, that was your only other chance. It's another person I've met, and 
I've wanted to meet him for years. <laughs> like 15 years? Or, or 10 years? 13, I think it is. 13. It was about 13 years ago when I first you know, played Silent Hill 2. Um, I think it was when it was released, actually. Well, near enough when it was released. And I just played it like, this soundtrack is super good! And then Silent Hill 3 came out, and I played that, and I fell in love with that as well. It is still my favourite game of all time. Mm-hmm. And I thought, oh, I need to buy these soundtracks already. And then I realised it had really stupid hard to actually buy them. I eventually went to find copies of Silent Hill 3 and 4 soundtracks in the second hand shop in London. Just don't have those. Second hand? Sh- what? I don't know. I managed to find them and I was like, I'm buying these right now. <laughs> That's like me finding Discworld 2 in the charity shop. Yeah, it does happen again. Yeah. It's sort of like, this is like gold dust. How? What's this doing in a charity shop? This should be on eBay for thousands of pounds. <laughs> Not two pound fifty in a charity shop. Well, you take things when you get them. Yeah. Oh, I'm not complaining. It's all like two pound fifty. Discworld two having. <laughs> because I eventually did order the Silent Hill Sounds box, so mm. yeah, it's like seventy quid. But it's all seven soundtracks plus a bonus disc. So that works out as less than a tenner per disc. Indeed. And you know, it comes with all the music from the soundtracks. Mm. Not all the music from the games, because as I said earlier, there's a lot of it that isn't there. Yeah. Which is strange. I guess there's a lot of things like that. I know a lot of soundtrack releases don't include everything. Yeah. So. It's like, um, there's quite a few things from Metal Gear Rising that aren't. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah. A lot of them, basically everything is instrumental, for example, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> it's well, basically, it's called the vocal collection or whatever, so. Mm. Also, um, Repo, there's quite a few mm. songs that aren't on the official soundtrack, they're just in the movie. And there's a bunch of stuff from Manica that is not on the soundtrack either. Mm. Which is kind of annoying. A lot of uh, Kajira soundtracks don't have everything on there. Mm. It's kind of a documentation of a lot of stuff gets skipped for some reason. Uh, one of these it's days. Running theme. Yeah. I'm sure there must be some compilation files that people have put together, sort of like soundtrack music that aren't on the official soundtrack. I think we do quite often make that kind of stuff, but I take it directly from the source. I think, yeah. uh, there's a lot of cases you can't do anything about it though, because it's combined with like, vocals or sound effects and stuff, and you can't really hear it that yeah. much. But you know it's there, you can hear it. Like, I'm never going to own a version of this properly because it's not released and, you know, it's just covered in other stuff. Yeah, that's that's a problem with lots of these things. It's sort of like, well, there's not much I can really do because there's all the sound effects over it. I mean, in some cases it can be separated due to the way it's mixed, but in other mm. cases they're all just part of the same file and it's been possible. Yeah, it's a bit like, um, you know, it's trying to do uh, karaoke versions of uh, Devin Townsend's music, but because of the way that's mixed, you cannot properly... Separate it out. Yeah. It's sort of like, the, the layering effect is so is such that you cannot properly separate out the vocals, because um, uh, Planet Smasher, mm. you'll get sort of like a third of the way through, and then the vocals will come back in because of the way it's layered, and you cannot get rid of them at all. Yeah. Well, it can't be an example like that as well. Because mm-hmm. they tried, you know, making special character versions of those, and it just doesn't work. Yeah. That might be the reason why you don't come across Ailstorm karaoke songs. Possibly. Because they just can't <laughs> separate it out. I suppose it, it, I think it just depends on the way that the, the vocals are added in. I mean, yeah. In some cases, as a separate kind of layer. Yeah. Record it separately or whatever. If you think if you record it as a group, then you can't really do anything about it because it will be recorded on the same kind of track. Mm. So. Well, Devin Townsend's music has a lot of layering involved. It's all like layers upon layers upon layers. It's as complex as hell, though. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he will meticulously work on each track. I can imagine. Um, uh, yeah, again, sidetracked. <laughs> it's not talking about music. Yeah. I mean, that's generally in the right kind of direction. Mm. As opposed to one direction. So music. <laughs> Arguably. Questionable. Yeah. <laughs> well, in the strictest definition of the word music it is. But mm, this is a quote around that. Mm. Music. Yeah. Otherwise it's made the quotation sign since no one can actually see me. I'll edit no, I won't edit it out. That's just a stupid thing that you've done, so it's <laughs> For posterity now. Yeah, well, we all do stupid things. I thought I went on the British to decide to go in a complete ramble in a complete opposite direction and no one knew what we were about. Which time? Fair point. <laughs> yeah, he's kind of like that. Yeah. I mean, he did it on this show! So... That's, that's what I was referring to. Ah, uh, yeah. 
then again, that episode we were all rambling a bit weirdly. Well, it was the end of your review, so we didn't really have much of an actual f- proper focus other than everything that happened in here. Yeah, true. Oh, God, it's only time for one of those again. Hmm? It's only time for one of those again, isn't it? Yeah. It's November, you just Yeah. God damn. Basically, what we need to do is, at the end of the year, we, I think, because we're doing quite well actually being in the same room to record this. So we can meet up again? Yeah. Oh, Christmas, fuck. Hmm? Christmas time. Yeah. Hopefully we're post-Christmas, I guess, maybe in January or something. Well, basically, just, we can arrange for, sort of, a New Year's get-together. Yeah, we can actually record it together. Yeah. I mean, considering that my I'll probably not be doing my usual New Year's thing for various reasons, mainly costs and all that sort of thing, uh, and also just wanting to be close to home. At that, considering all the shit that's gone on. Oh, but anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, we can meet up and do an interview of you actually you know, together for once. Yeah. We talk about all the useless shit that's happened this year regarding music. Yeah. And uh, all the stuff that's been released that I haven't bothered to listen to. <laughs> Which is most of it, because I haven't actually listened to much of it. Yeah. I've listened, to, I've probably listened to more, but that's more by virtue of what my vocation is. <laughs> this is true. And again, thinking about it, between me and Rich getting, and uh, Steve getting albums when we were in Japan, I think we bought like 12 albums that came out this year. Mm hmm. None of which would help before. So. Huh? None of which would help before that. So. Yeah. Well, we can discuss all that. But anyway, um, should we rate the gig? I'm not sure about that. I've never. <laughs> this is the first time we've done a gig discussion. This is true. Then I guess we should rate it. Um, if we're rating us, I'm not sure. Yeah. Um. Oh, I I'm not even sure how you rate how you'd go about rating a gig. So with anything else, I guess. Uh, um, I suppose. Oh, well, what would you give it? Four out of five. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the only real complaint I could have is the sound just kind of distorted occasionally. Mm. But it wasn't often, so. Yeah. I've certainly been a lot worse venues a lot more often. Yeah, I'd say a four point four point seven five. The point two five is because we had to sit all the time. That's fair. Which meant I ended up with numb legs. I know that sounds weird, but basically my my legs were in a. We haven't moved for hours. Move <laughs> us. Move us, please. But yeah. Um. Overall, I I'd say if it happens again, definitely need to see about getting tickets. Indeed. And form make sure that we have a bigger group. Yeah, because you know, there are two of us. I mean, yeah. we pulled up somehow. I'm not sure how that happened, but it, yeah. it's kind of coincident. Yeah, we randomly bumped into a few... F- well, I, re- I bumped into a friend and we ended up making a group. <laughs> Which just kind of felt happy, I yeah. guess. I'm not sure that's the right word. I'm not sure what I'm thinking of right now. Comfortable. That's a good word. Let's <laughs> go with that. Anyway, yeah. Good review. Good, good, good review. Well, at least I hope it's a good review. <laughs> what do you think? You're all the audience. <laughs> Why am I pointing at the screen? You can't see this shit. <laughs> oh, it's, it's like a revolver auto lock. <laughs> pat, pat. <laughs> <laughs> they can't see me patting either. <laughs> <laughs> so now they mean Mike Patton. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm just gonna drown my co host. <laughs> With what? We have a bathroom. No point. <laughs> With what he asks me. <laughs> well, they didn't hear that. They heard what I said. <laughs> I'm just reiterating how re- dumb your question was. <laughs> you in a second. Huh? I'm going to reiterate you in a second. Right out the window. What? <laughs> that doesn't even make sense! When did anything we do make any sense whatsoever? Pizza. Pizza, 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 pizza. I'm gonna fucking have a horn around my head again. <laughs> She's never bloody leaves. <laughs> Why don't you slip the entire bank? Is that my brain? What? Did you not hear about that? Oh, is that um, Harahi's voice actor? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I've known about that. Huh? That I've yeah. yeah. 
You expect me to remember anyone other than Steve Blum? Hmm? Or Elizabeth McGuinn? Well, her too. And Tara Strong. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Everyone doesn't know no, no. He's in fucking everything. Who? Tim and Troy Baker. Basically, if it's a male character in an anime or a game within the last, like, three years, it's probably one of those two. They've voiced pretty much bloody everybody within. Oh, Lord. <laughs> so, ba- shouldn't it be those three? Steve Blum? Uh, I think they've taken his position as the male voice of choice. Can they secure impotence, though? <laughs> Unfortunately, no. Yeah, anyway, we've got completely tired of talking about voice actors for yeah. games and stuff. Because well, uh, okay. very partially relevant. Well, uh, okay. So we've discussed the gig. Now you can rant about Believe again. Believe is awful. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> well, that wasn't really a rant. That was just a Tourette's rage. <laughs> the Tourette's how Tourette's rage about Believe. Cause it's a bad song. <laughs> but yeah, anyway. Uh, yeah, I went to Japan just for the sake of seeing Calvino because I'm a gigantic fanboy. And, and yeah, they played Believe. This is kind of sad because Believe is not very good. How is it? It's, I mean, when you consider that Metallica, I don't think ever play anything from St. Anger Live because it's so universally hated. Because Believe isn't universally hated, that's a problem. What? There's people that actually like it. I don't know why. Who are these people? I don't know, but there's a lot of them. They're like voters! Find them! Kill them all! <laughs> I don't know where the... Oh wait, I know where that came from. The thing is that everyone I've ever actually properly talked to in depth seems to, you know, either kind of like it or hate it. So, where are the people that like it? I don't know! I just don't get it. I, I know there was one person that I came across and lost if I had an argument with because they seemed to think that Heavenly Blue was amazing, but hey. Oy. Thankfully they didn't play that, because it's possible they would have done, because they did in a lot of the other days of the talk. But thankfully they played Symphonia instead, and Symphonia is good. You would have just blown a gasket if you if they played Heavenly Blue as well, wouldn't you? Yeah, especially because you know, the first time they did the concert on the tour, they played fucking Kim the Jinnah Neo from Malika, which is super good. And they replaced it the second date with freaking Heavenly Blue. The fuck? <laughs> That's actually my point. And for the date I went to, they put Symphonia in there, which is good. And then the day after I was, went, which I probably would have been like going to, because I'm a pirate, and <laughs> if I stayed the extra day, they made fucking Mirai, which is garbage. It, 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 it's like, it's like one of those, um... Pretty much is going good, bad, good, bad. It, it's like one of those, you know, when you get those, um reading sort of when people are being tested on their heart rate and everything and you get the waving up (laughs) up and down lines it's like one of those it's sort of like good bad good bad (laughs) well I was thinking now they're just going to carry on and do uh, human and hygienic time followed up by fucking snow falling which is terrible as well you know, having a good time of it with Calafina at the moment they only have like four songs I don't like and they seem to be playing all of them (laughs) Do you put, they put all four of the bloody things in their friggin' best of lives. Including both days that they believe. <laughs> okay. So yeah, between the two concerts they actually had the recordings of, and they, they released lives for, yeah, they put believe twice, and the other, all the other songs I don't like, at least once. And skip like half of the discography, including most of the best. I've been questioning the friggin' best releases for a long time, because it's pretty much just the opposite of that. Well, you know best of releases don't actually mean a fucking thing. It's just best ofs are a bad concept. I do not like them. I never have liked them for any band. Well, it's even worse when you... I, I picked up a uh, compilation. A three-disc compilation. I think I already know what. Um, the best of metal. Uh, they had one Judas Priest song. No Metallica, no Megadeth, no Slayer, no Anthrax, no Black Sabbath, no Iron Maiden, um, no Al- Alice Cooper. Well, that sure doesn't sound metal to me. Yeah. It, it's the one that the opening song is not metal, it's country rock. It's Don't all... be showing me that. You what, mate? It's something. Like, what the fuck is this? This is not the best of metal. It's good metal, but I don't know most of the bands on here. 
And seeing as I am a major metalhead, if I don't know who the bands are on here, that is not the best of metal, because the best of metal denotes bands that everyone knows about, even in passing. Yeah, I mean, I looked at that track list, and I don't know most of them either. And I have a, I like a lot of metal, including a lot of stuff you don't listen to. Exactly. So both of us together cover a large area, and there's still lots of there. It's like, who the hell are these guys? Yeah, I've never heard of them. It's like Rob Zombie. Well, I've heard of him. I've heard of them. What's the rest? <laughs> Three albums, 20 tracks each. We could recognise... Less than a third? Yeah. <laughs> it's like... I didn't think even... I think like four bands we knew. <laughs> There's something stupid like that, yeah. It's sort of like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> This is not the best of metal. No, but it wasn't even metal. Yeah. It was, uh, it was so infuriating because it's sort of like... I mean, I picked it up because I was sort of like, well, let's see what these bands are like. Not metal. Yeah. <laughs> not even close. It's good music, but it's either not metal or not the best of metal. Yeah. No Queen's Reich. Where the fuck's Queen's Reich? Who knows? You know, one of the big power metal bands. I thought even there was all that Blind Guardian would be on there. Yeah. I don't know where they were either, so. Or Rhapsody. Or any of the other ones that everyone knows about. Yeah. It's. Yeah. What's that? Freaking Best of California. There was two freaking albums which literally covered about half of the discography and somehow ended up with most of the bottom half of the quarters. Which is. Most of it's still really good stuff, but there's just so much stuff there that's even better that they just didn't put on there. And they you know, pretty much took those hit lists and used them for their bullying out lives with a couple of extra songs. Which Thanks is... Thanks a couple of extra songs that added, but were really good ones. But It's rather baffling how they managed that. Yeah. It's like, how can you screw it up so badly? Hopefully, when they actually saw them live, I mean, they played the entirety of the new album with the exception of Heaven in Blue, thankfully. It's the only song from the album they play. And they actually ended up playing three B-sides, which is really unlikely. Saying, what, what? Saying B-sides that are live? Well, that's uncommon. Especially three of them. Yeah. I started that with one. I don't think I've ever actually had a gig before. The, the first opening track is a B-side. The opening track? Yeah. Huh. They play Covite, which is the B-side to ring a bell. And it's like, what? They're playing this first? <laughs> that's really odd. Huh. The only thing is, I played the entirety of the Believe single, including, you know, both of the B-sides. Huh. Thankfully, which are both really good. Hmm. Which is... Uh, that's, that's a bizarre thing. I mean, I've come across some cases where the B-sides are better than the main song. I quite often come across it. Yeah. It's kind of weird. Yeah. But a lot of the time it'll be a case of the B-side is just better. It's not a case of you don't want to listen to the A-side. Mm. Like, um, are you familiar with Urban Spaceman? No, but I am. I'm the urban spaceman, baby, I got speed, I oh, yeah, got right. everything I need. Yeah. There is, we don't break copyright reasons. <laughs> I don't think that was enough to break it. <laughs> and I've, I highly doubt the Bonzo Doodah band. <laughs> well, no. Well, considering, yeah, they wouldn't care. But yeah, uh, uh, uh Be sad. Hmm? Be sad. Yeah, uh, the B-side to that is um, In the Canyons of Your Mind. It is this really surreal, it's sort of like um, talking about through the ventricles of your chest. <laughs> and My God, it's like nearly Mars Wolf on their own level lyrics. Mars Wolf on lyrics. Yeah, but the, it's basically framed as this really over-the-top love song. I'll have to play it to you later, but it's really strange. Yeah. But the fact that the only real reason that, you know, I've listened to the B-side to Believe and not A-side is even because Believe is crap. I have said it again. <laughs> thing is, though, is it? can I think I kind of won that respect? Because out of the top ten songs of theirs, they've got like 80 songs now. Yeah. Top ten includes four B-sides. <laughs> Those resources are just generally really freaking good. With the exception of Murray and Snow Falling, with, with which it is my bottom five. Because mm. they can both fuck off. Ooh, now here's a question. Because it's become a running joke of our show. What about Nickelback, you say? Exactly. I haven't heard of it. I wish I would look at this up and walk back. Yeah. 
I mean, next episode we have a reason to bring up Nickelback again, so we can check up on the B-sides. This is when we find out that all the B-sides are sort of like Mozart's Requiem. So, and oh, that's where all the good material went. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Why do you not play this on the radio, you fucktards? Maybe. Yeah, like I finished on set, generally was 4.75 out of 5. <laughs> and that 2.5 is entirely because of blue. Don't you mean 0.25? What are you going to say? You said 2.5! I tried to halve the entire school just because that song was there, but I'm not going to. <laughs> so the rest of it was really freaking good. <laughs> the only problem I have with it is not enough stuff from the earlier albums, because other than about I don't know, about five songs in total from the first three albums, I was like, oh. Mm. Also, for like the first time ever, they didn't freaking play Red Moon, which is like my favourite song of theirs. I really wanted to hear it live. Yeah. If I had that and Tender Sugar tonight, then I would have had like two of my top three songs ever in like a week or two. Unfortunately, the other one is Same Deep Water by you, As You by The Cure, which they've only played about ten times since the last 26 years have been out. So that's extremely unlikely. <laughs> At this rate, it would probably only be a, a farewell tour that they'd play it on. It was, it's was. it been played, as far as I can tell, during the initial tour for Disintegration and the trilogy tour where they played the entire Disintegration. Of course. Along with two other albums. I think that's probably the only time it's ever been played live. Yeah. So it's looking more and more likely that they'll only play it as a farewell tour mm. or something very special like an anniversary thing. Or... And I would say, you know, that it's because it's like nine minutes long. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, they played Disintegration itself quite often, that's eight. Yeah. And they played Forever when I saw them, which is seven and a half. I don't think long length of songs really dictates whether they'll get played or not. I mean, no. considering that there are some, like Mighty Masturbator, which is almost 17 minutes long. Mm. I mean, so, when I saw Isis, I played the Sydney version of Celestial Tower, which is, I forget, 18 minutes long in total. Yeah. When I saw Cult of Luna, they finished up with Dark City Dead Man, which is 15. Mm. Absolutely incredible. One of the best life forms I've ever seen. And there we go. So I don't think. I think it's more reception than anything else. I mean, that's probably. Well, that can be explained as to why you never hear St. Anger tracks played live yeah, anymore. I just never the curious. Well, I saw them three times, and all three times I needed a completely different set list. Yeah. It was really interesting. And that comes a couple of songs that appeared now and then every time. but... Yeah. That's I mean, even like, Friday I'm in Love didn't appear in the last one, yeah. and I was like, what? I was about to be there. Yeah. Like, I, don't, I don't even like that song, it's like <laughs> one of my least favourite Cure songs. Yeah. But uh, I still expected it to be there, because it's also the, probably the most well known one I've done. That and Love Cats. Right, Love Cats. Love Cats is good. Mm. But I mean, even my parents know Love Cats, and they don't know the Cure at all. They just know the parody Mary Whitehouse experience take on it. Have you seen any of that? Yeah. Yeah. Although I'll have to show you if you haven't seen it already the um, Shakespeare's sister take because like, it's just. I think the most interesting version of the Cure song I've seen recently is Rosetta's cover of Homesick. I think a post metal band just covering the Cure is really weird. It's actually really good as well. Hmm. It's a really good cover. Although so the other weirdest cover which I got bought up against recently, I've seen it before, but it is the Weeping Song by Nick Cave, being covered by a Doom Metal, the Doom Star Death Metal band, Morning Below Earth. Nick Cave covered by Doom Metal. That's really good. We'll have to look it up later. It is on YouTube, but that's the only way you can get it, because the only way to do it is getting it out of print 10 inch LP. That's the only way it's ever released. I'll split. Oy. So it's another one of those weird. <laughs> good luck like, ever having a copy of it. Yeah. Anyway, um, what have you been, uh, what you've been listening to? Maybe? Uh, we should do that, haven't we? Yeah. Hmm? Haven't done that yet, so we should do that. Uh, well, let's. What should we stop here for now? Let's Until stop here for now because. We need to quickly rejog our memories of the album because it's been a while since we both listened to it. Um, for us, it'll be uh, probably about an hour, something like that. Yeah. Um, but for you, it'll be imperceptible seconds. That's slight taking of time as time goes fast. Indeed, you strange person. I wish that I could turn back. If you'll excuse me, I've got to drown my co-host. I'm already dead. You did it before. I got better. Honest. Right. As I say, we will be back in imperceptible seconds.